Hello everyone and welcome to this series about IPython Notebook. This is part 7 and it's about Pandas. Uh, Pandas is a powerful and easy to use library for data analysis. It has two main objects to represent data. Um, series and data frame. Series is an array-like object and data frame is a table-like object. Pandas is part of SciPy ecosystem. Um, so uh, importing uh, the libraries. I'll be importing uh, NumPy as MP and I'll be importing pandas as pd um, these are almost standard so try to use um, these shortcuts and they will make um, um, uh, your coding um, faster actually typing two letters instead of uh, five or six letters uh, anyway um, we'll uh, start uh, working with the series series is an array like object so I'll pass an array um, to this series to define it to define a series, uh, type pd.series, make sure to capitalize the S, so um, series with capital S, and pass your uh, array to um, series. Make sure you pass it as an array. Don't just um, uh, pass it like this with uh, no brackets. Make sure you put your values inside brackets so that it understands th these are not different parameters, but uh, these are um, single parameter as uh, data so you're passing that as data um, then I'm returning X um, you can see that it uh, generated index for our values um, starting from 0 to 4 and our values starting from 1 to 5 um, data type of our values are integer 64 we can do basic operations with our series I'm adding 100 to our series so I'll get, um, notice it didn't change the index, but it changed our values to, um, um, and added 100 to them. Um, in here, I'm doing more math with it. So I'm uh, taking x to the power 2 plus 100. Um, I can compare it to a value, so I'm um, checking for any values larger than 2. It will return a Boolean series um, telling me each if each value meets this criteria or not. Um, so um, the first value d is not larger than two. The second value is not larger than two, um, and the last three values, three, four, five, are larger than two. Um, a quick way to look um, at your Boolean series is with the any and all. So uh, I'll store this. Uh, boolean series x uh, larger than 2 inside a variable named larger than 2 so, uh, and I'm returning that um, series uh, in here uh, you can notice the data type is boolean so any will look for any true values in here and because we have three true and true uh, false uh, it returns true because there are some true values in here all will make sure all the values are true and this will return false because not all the values are true. Apply. Uh, in here I have a function um, that check, uh, checks if a number is uh, even and uh, multiplies it by 2. And if it's uh, odd, it will multiply it by 3. I can apply this function to my series without looping over series and applying it uh, item by item. Uh, to do that, uh, x dot apply and pass the function that you want to apply to your series. And this will return my series um, after, I, uh, after we applied this function to each item. In them. Uh, avoid looping over your data with the for loop. Uh, it's way more efficient to um, uh, try to do mathematical operations directly on them um, as a series or uh, use apply for more complex um, functions that you want to do with your data uh, and here I'm timing uh, a normal for loop applying this function to each item and then I'm using apply um, with a um, for loop it did it in 242 milliseconds uh, with apply it did it only in 41.5 milliseconds as type will return your series as a different type so I'm returning my data in here as float 64 uh, and my original data was integer 64 and it returned them as the new type. Uh, copying your data. 
if I just um, assigned uh, y um, to the value of x um, and access the, sorry, uh, execute this one first, uh, and access my first value, uh, value of um, uh, y of x, it returned my first value that was inside the x. So y of x returned my first value. Um, if I changed the first value of y and um, displayed y, I will see the first value is changed from 1 to 100. Um, do you think uh, the first value of x changed or is it still the same? If we check uh, the values of x in here, we can see the value of the first one changed too. Because uh, when we um, said y equals x, it just uh, pointed y to the same series x is pointing to. So they are uh, pointing to the same copy of the series. To have a different copy of the series, you say y equals x dot copy. And this will store a new um, um, series inside y or point y to a different uh, series with the same values. Uh, so if I changed the first value of x now to 1 and displayed x, uh, we can see our original value is 1 now. And in y, the first value um, is still 100. It did not affect y. Changing x now did not um, affect y because they are pointing to do two, uh, two different uh, series. Um, describe is a useful function. It will um, do a quick um, analysis, statistical analysis of your data. It's telling me the count, uh, how many values I have in there, five. Uh, the mean or average is three. Uh, standard deviation 1.5, minimum and maximum, and have a small histogram in here um, at uh, 25, 50, and 75. I can make it um, into a more narrow uh, histogram of uh, 40, 50, and 60 by changing uh, the percentile width, uh, or I can make it into uh, um, a pointing at uh, 10 and 90 by changing just the width of my percentile. We change it back to 50 and I get it at um, 25, 50 and 75 the way I want it now. Um, data frame is a, um, f a table like object so it has two dimensions. Um, I'll start by um, defining uh, one dimensional um, list of data in here from 1 to 9 and I'll uh, start in a variable named data. I'll pass data to um, data frame uh, class to uh, create a new data frame. Uh, I'm passing one parameter in here uh, named columns and it takes a list of names of my columns because I have one column in here so I'm just naming it x. Um, and I stored my uh, data frame in df. Make sure you use capital D and capital F when you're typing this. Uh, because this is data, um, uh, it's um, a class named data frame with capital D and capital F, and it's um, case sensitive. So uh, let's take a look at our data frame. Uh, we can see we have a column in here named X, and our values from 1 to 9, and we have an index in here to the left, starting from 0 until 8. And it's giving me the shape of 9 rows and 1 column. I can take uh, a look at any column I have. Uh, I have one column in here, uh, so I'm returning my one column, so df of x, that returns my one column and the index. Um, I can access one value inside uh, my column uh, just by um, passing the index of this value. So return to return one, I will pass zero, and passing zero actually returned one. Um, adding extra columns, I'll be... Um, Adding an extra column, um, x uh, plus 2, which is the values of x plus 2. So, um, d, uh, df of uh, uh, x plus 2 equals df of x plus 2. And I'm returning my data frame. Uh, and I can see that I have uh, a new column in here, x plus 2. And it has the values of this plus 2. Um, the shape of my data frame is changing, so 9 rows by 2 columns. I'll add two more columns, x square and x factorial. Uh, for x square, I'm doing um, df of x 
uh, times times two, which is power to the power two, and x factorial. Um, it's um, the f of x that apply. Then I'm applying factorial uh, function from uh, numpy uh, mp, uh, mp that math that factorial, and I'm returning my data frame, and I can see the new two new columns in here with the square numbers and the factorial numbers. Uh, is even. Uh, in here, I'm uh, checking if uh, x uh, mod 2 is 0. That's uh, a check for even. And I'm storing the return of this in a new column uh, called is even. And I'm returning the data frame. So I can see that uh, false, true, false, true, false, true. Uh, and it's telling me if the original number is uh, even or not. Um, a better way to look at this is um, um, if it had the values even, odd, even, odd. That would make it more convenient for some uh, um, functions. So we can do that with map. We'll be mapping the values in is even dot map. So I'm um, getting this column uh, is even, and I'm mapping it uh, with this dictionary. False is odd true is even so if it's true change um, give me the value even and if it's false give me the value odd uh, and I'm storing that into a new column called odd even now I have the new column odd even it has strings inside it um, odd even odd even um, now I have a column that I don't need so I can drop that column to drop a column um, uh, df dot drop, um, then the name of your column is even, um, and then axis. Uh, the second um, parameter in here is the axis. So I'm uh, telling it on axis one. Axis one is the columns. Axis zero is rows. So if you want to drop a row, you will use axis zero, which is the default. But if you want to drop something from um, columns, you want to drop a whole column, you'll have to use axis equals one or just one because it's second parameter. So, uh, and I'm storing the value uh, after dropping that back in DF and displaying it. So that's my data frame without uh, the Boolean uh, column. Uh, multi column select, I can select multiple columns. So, in here, I'm selecting X and uh, odd even make sure you use double brackets if you want to select multiple columns uh, the return of that is a data frame with two columns x and odd even uh, you can see the shape in here a uh, nine by two uh, controlling display options um, you can control uh, the maximum number of columns that you want to show and the maximum number of rows that you want to show uh, and here I'm setting the maximum number of uh, columns, uh, PD that options that display that max columns, and PD uh, that options that uh, display that max rows. Um, um, I can also control how does it show it. And here it's uh, displaying this um, nice uh, table representation of uh, my uh, data frame. I can disable that and just show it as uh, text. Uh, so um, PD that options the display that um, notebook um, representation HTML or REPR underscore HTML equals false. So I'm disabling that now, and this is how my data look uh, without um, the um, uh, the HTML um, uh, formatting. Uh, sometimes it's more convenient to work in data um, with your data in text format, especially if you have really a lot of columns that you're working with. Um, filtering. Um, if I want only um, odd numbers, uh, I can filter only odd numbers uh, by um, going um, D, um, DF um, of odd even equals equals to odd. And make sure you put your whole um, condition inside brackets. So DF of my condition returns this. It returned um, uh, all the odd values inside my um, uh, data frame. Uh, I look at uh, even values. 
so um, I can filter only even values and get only even values. I get two, four, six, eight. Um, chaining filters, I can have uh, or and or um, or and um, um, gates between my filters. So I can say I want all even numbers or um, any number that um, square uh, the square of that uh, number is less than twenty. So it returned all even numbers uh, and um, two odd numbers with square uh, x square less than uh, 20. Uh, I can put and, so it will return even numbers um, only um, that has um, x square uh, less than 20. Um, and it returned only two values of uh, 2 and 4, uh, even numbers, and their square uh, x square is less than 20. Um, further chaining, you can, um, after you do your filter chaining or um, uh, your filter um, condition, you can have extra um, um, things like uh, selecting your column. And here I'm selecting uh, x plus 2. I'm returning the first value in x um, uh, plus 2. So uh, I'm filtering, then returning only um, the first uh, value inside my uh, condition. Uh, scatter matrix, uh, it's a good way to visualize your complete um, data frame. Um, so to uh, do that, PD that uh, scatter matrix, and then you pass your um, data frame. I'm uh, selecting two more things in here that uh, I will explain in a second. Uh, after looking at our um, uh, scatter matrix. Uh, so we have all our columns in here, x, uh, x plus 2, x square, and x factorial. And we have the same columns in here, x, uh, x plus 2, x square, and x factorial. And it's trying to uh, plot everything with everything else. So we can look at x with factorial, and it's it looks like a factorial chart. Um, this looks like an exponential chart, like what we would expect from uh, x square. Uh, x um, plus 2, it's a straight line, exactly what would we expect. Um, and here you have a small histogram of everything. Um, diagonal equals KDE, that controls how it displays this um, histogram. Uh, you have two um, options, you can use either um, KDE or just HIST for histogram. To change that to histogram, you can see that um, it changed uh, that to a histogram. Um, finally, f uh, figure size. Figure size is 10 by 10. It's just to plot it um, in a bigger high resolution chart to see all the fine details. Uh, that's what you usually uh, want to do with your uh, scatter metrics, is to plot it as large as you can to see any um, details that you might uh, missed. Um, DF uh, that describe uh, describe this will return our um, this will uh, return uh, statistical analysis of all our columns. Uh, in here, notice it's also trimming after six values only, and um, that's not we what we want. So let's go and change that. We'll make it. Um, 25 values, for example, for maximum rows. And let's execute that again. And we can see we have our complete um, uh, set of uh, values for our statistical analysis. So we can see the maximum, the minimum of all our columns, standard deviation, mean, and count. Um, reading from comma-separated value files or uh, tab-separated uh, value files. Um, in here, um, uh, you can read uh, from any uh, you can read any comma separated uh, value file uh, with the function pd that uh, read csv, and you can pass either a URL or a, a an absolute or a relative uh, path within your hard drive. So you can um, if you have um, a comma separated value uh, in the same working folder that you have. You can just name your file in here, for example, test that um, um, comma separated value. 
and uh, that's how you read the file in your working directory named test that comes separated value uh, but that's not what I want now I want to read URL uh, I'm uh, reading from uh, Google Finance um, historical uh, data it's returning uh, a comma separated uh, value file back to us uh, I'm storing uh, my um, data frame inside uh, inside a variable named uh, stock data um, displaying stock data we have um, date open high close volume if you're familiar with the uh, stocks uh, and these are the opening value closing value highest and lowest value throughout the day and the trading volume uh, of that day um, we can add extra columns so we can do a little analysis with our stocks in here uh, I want to calculate the change amount so um, the closing price minus the opening price and I'm uh, cha um, storing that uh, in change amount a column named uh, change amount and um, I'm calculating the change percentage by dividing that amount by close to get a percentage and let's execute that and uh, we get two more columns in here change amount and change percentage and we can see how much did it change through um, each one of these days um, that's it uh, for this uh, lesson uh, this uh, lesson is available open source on github and it's uh, viewable on nb hub uh, on nb viewer the um, link to this is uh, available in the description uh, below feel uh, free to use this whenever you're working with the pandas as a reference um, i hope if you like this you will subscribe to this channel and watch part 8 about senpai thank you